Hey everybody, welcome back to another Jackson Jet Setting cruise ship tour. Today we're checking out the Symphony of the Seas. She is a member of the Oasis class with Royal Caribbean, meaning she is pretty gigantic. And at one time was the largest ship in the entire world. We're going to check out all 18 decks of her starting at the very top. If you like these types of videos, be sure to subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of ship tours on there at this point and many more to come. Symphony launched in 2017, and I like to think that she is the beginning of the perfection of the Oasis class. I've sailed on many Oasis class ships at this point, and she's just my favorite. I think the design of this whole place is absolutely amazing. As you can see, we're starting our tour here on deck 17. This is the suite lounge and the coastal kitchen. So this is exclusive to suite guests. Uh, only suite guests and pinnacle members are allowed to enter. They also have their own suite deck on this deck. It's actually located in the forward part of deck 18. It's a split deck, so you actually have to go down a few decks uh, to get over to it. Uh, but it's located underneath the water slides and you have some private sun tanning areas. You have your own private bar as well as a hot tub. So if you are looking to sail in a suite on board, this is a great option because you do have basically your own private deck to lounge and enjoy I the love ship. all the different types of seating up here, as well as the private hot tub. Hot tubs can get quite busy, of course, on the Symphony of the Seas. There are a lot of them, but it's just nice to have less people to have less access to your private hot tub. I did like this little art piece as well that's exclusive just to the suite deck. And of course, it is a great day out here in Nassau. I love all the clear barriers that allow you to enjoy all of the views and not miss anything. And of course, the hot tub was empty because there are just so few people that have access to it. Now, in between decks here is going to be an awesome piano. Uh, so it actually plays notes as you walk down. Hooked is one of the specialty restaurants on board. This you can probably tell specializes in seafood. So if you want your lobster, this is going to be the place to go. Do nice surf and turf as well, oysters, that sort of thing. They have a bar inside too, so you can get your cocktails. This is gonna be located above the Solarium Cafe, and it's a little bit open air with the Solarium Cafe, which is kind of cool. I really like the location of this restaurant, probably my favorite of the specialty restaurants on board. You just have really great sail away views, uh, which was when I dined there uh, with my brother-in-law. Walking outside, we can see one of the three water slides on board the Symphony of the Seas. This is one of my favorites. I affectionately call it the toilet bowl. You get spit out into that bowl, circle a couple times. If you have a little bit of mass like me, you make a couple of rotations there and then you're spit out the bottom. It's really a lot of fun. I definitely recommend it. Plenty of sun loungers here on this deck. They're gonna be above the main pool deck. There are plenty of pools to spread out in on the Symphony of the Seas. If you've been on board an Oasis class ship, they're pretty similar. Uh, I do think there's a few minor variations here and there, uh, but overall you're gonna Notice that uh, things are pretty similar to even Oasis of the Seas, which was the first in this class. Those cabanas up ahead are for rent. I don't love how they jut out into the middle of the walkway. They were obviously added after the design of the ship. And up ahead is a bridge to connect the two sides of deck 16, since this deck does have like a little hollow section to let the pools on deck 15 have their nice sunshine. So it's a nice place to watch some of the activities in those pools. It's a just great people watching spot. So I do recommend checking that out. This is gonna be really close to Splashway Bay on board. They have a really great kids splash pad and water slide complex on board here. So obviously wasn't going when I was shooting this, but there's just water all over the place. The kids absolutely love it. So great choice for families on board Symphony of the Seas. Quick reminder here, if you are interested in a cruise vacation, feel free to reach out to us at jacksonjetsetting.com. We can plan any cruise vacation anywhere around the world, not just the ones that we feature here on the channel. Uh, so we would look forward to helping you plan your next vacation. Here we get a great view of the outside of the suite lounge and the coastal kitchen where we started our tour. And to the left there are actually some of the suite balconies right next door. Really, really cool here. Uh, so deck 18 is above that, and that's really just the upper levels of the suites uh, on this ship. So uh, the first public deck is going to be deck 17, and that's really just going to be for suite guests. And then the first deck for everyone is going to be deck 16 here. Of course, it's going to feature the Windjammer, which is going to be a popular spot for many cruisers, if not all cruisers. Going to be open breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and have some amazing items there. 
I will say the Windjammer does get quite busy in the mornings on Oasis class ships, especially Symphony of the Seas. There are a lot of places though on board that you can get a complimentary breakfast. Stay tuned for my tips and tricks video for Symphony of the Seas to find out where those are. I may mention them a little bit later in the video though, so keep watching. So here's the other side of the Windjammer Cafe. We'll take a look inside here at what it looks like. Here you'll find your American food. You'll also find some ethnic cuisines, some Asian food, some Indian food sometimes. There's theme nights in here. There's always going to be some sort of dessert going on. Like when I walked through here, there was actually a chocolate fondue fountain, which I thought was a great touch. A lot of different options. It's always worth at least walking through if you're wondering what to eat. You may find something that you like. So now let's walk down to deck 15 and check out a little bit more of the Symphony of the Seas. First stop on deck 15 is going to be the Paddy Dive Center. So this is where you're going to go check in for some of your dive excursions. They're going to check your sea card, make sure everything looks good. You can also buy some items that you may have left on shore. They also do lessons on longer uh, sailings here. So that's pretty cool. If you've never scuba dived before and you wanted to get certified, you can do that right here on board the Symphony of the Seas. But now we're walking back to sort of the kids fun area. So inside here is gonna be the teen club. So you can see all of the fun video games going on, a lot of space, a lot of really bright colors here. I felt like uh, this area was really great. A lot of room for folks uh, that are enjoying their time away from their parents. This is appropriately called the living room. Next door to the living room is fuel. So that's actually the nightclub for the teens, the like dedicated nightclub. So pretty cool there. Obviously adults not allowed in there, but taking a peek here on embarkation day before everyone starts running around. Really a cool spot just, just for the teens. The back deck is nearby as well, and that's gonna be just for teens. That's their outdoor section. Continuing aft, we're heading to what is the most fun part of the ship by far. You got zip lines, you got mini golf, you got ping pong, and then you have the ultimate abyss as well as the flow riders. So there is definitely a lead up in anticipation here with some really, really fun signs. So the ultimate abyss is a dry slide. It's not a wet slide and it is absolutely massively long and tall. It goes all the way from deck 15 here down to deck six at the boardwalk. It's a, it's a cool slide. So you definitely have to do it at least once on every cruise. Highly, highly recommend that. To the right here is the mini golf course. Nothing truly special about this mini golf course compared to other mini golf courses that I've seen on Amplified Chips. It seems to have kind of the same obstacles. I wish that Royal Caribbean would maybe mix things up ship to ship. Uh, it just seems like it's kind of the same stuff over and over again. Also, they don't use real golf balls anymore. I feel like the golf balls are just too expensive and they kept going over the ship. So they use kind of a wooden ball. So BYO golf balls if you wanted to have a true mini golf experience. To the left right there was the zip line. So it's a short zip line, but it is complimentary with the cruise. So I do recommend doing that if you are so inclined. Lines can kind of get long, so I would show up right on time or at least maybe 10 minutes early when the cruise schedule comes out. Kind of note when it's gonna open, show up right on time. Just make sure that your line isn't too long, not spending all your cruise vacation in line. To the right here is the first of two flow riders. So typically they'll be running one flow rider with stand up and the other one kind of the traditional boogie board experience. There are some awesome surfers that come on board and it's really fun to watch them. So those benches there, great to grab a cocktail, just watch people surf all day. Really a fun vibe back here. They even have the wipeout bar here to the left just to grab those cocktails, especially for that. Here is the entrance to the ultimate abyss. You have the cool creepy fish that you gotta walk through to get up there and there's twin slides that slide all the way down. Basically the same route, just mirrored. Really, really fun. Only problem is once you do it, you gotta get all the way back up here if you wanted to meet your friends that weren't participating in the slide activities. Here's the other floor rider here to the right. Now there is a lot more to see on this deck so we're gonna continue forward now on the other side of the deck. Check out what else there is to see. Have you sailed on Symphony or any of the other Oasis class ships? Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. Love to know. We've got a few more Oasis class sailings up ahead. We've got Wander the Seas in May 2024, and then I am on board the inaugural sailing on Utopia of the Seas, which I'm very excited about. To the left here is going to be the sport court. So you got pickleball at some points during the day. You got basketball, kind of open play basketball a lot of the time. 
volleyball, sometimes adult dodgeball, which is an absolute blast. So a lot of fun here. Stay active on vacation. To the left here is El Loco Fresh. This is a complimentary restaurant on board Symphony of the Seas. I am always impressed with El Loco Fresh. I live here in the Southwest in Arizona. Really good Mexican food, really good flavor, fresh tortillas, which I think is really important. The line just gets kind of long pretty much all the time. But if you're kind of wishing to maybe skip the wind jammer or some of the poolside restaurants, go check out El Loco Fresh. We're gonna pop right back indoors here for just a second, check out a few things that are inside this section of deck 15. So the right is unboxed. So this is a really cool concept. This has a lot of necessity vending machines. Only problem is they're not open while you're in port. I actually needed sunscreen on one of the ports and the vending machines weren't open. So that was a little annoying, but it is really convenient. It's got a lot of medicine and stuff in there. So if you need something late night, that's gonna be open for you hopefully even have headphones and electronics they have pokemon cards they have sports cards so you know gifts and stuff like that and then also like things that you'd find at like a drugstore right across the hallway is actually the ship's arcade one of two there's one actually on the boardwalk as well this one is pretty cool though it's got some air hockey some skee ball some crane game type activities so a lot of fun here and of course located right next to the kids clubs We're gonna start our tour of the pools on deck 15. We've already seen Splashway Bay, but here it is from ground level. So a lot of really fun activities here for the little kids. Of course, a lot of loungers here for the parents to watch their kids and even a few hot tubs as well spread out nearby. So you can always keep an eye on them, but also get a little relaxation for yourself as well. The pool bars are located close by as well, because as we cross the threshold here, we'll see the first of many pools on board the Symphony of the Seas. This bar, the sand bar, is located right next to the beach pool, appropriately enough. So the beach pool has a little bit of a chairs in the water kind of feel, a little bit more unique. Of course, the towel stand's gonna be close by. Be sure to return your towels before the end of the cruise or you will be charged $25 per towel. And of course, there's gonna be a hot tub on either side of this pool. And on the other end of this pool is going to be where the toilet bowl water slide spits out. So it's one of three Perfect Storm water slides on board. You're going to have the same staircase leading up to all three, but the other two that kind of race are going to be located on the other side of the deck. To the right is one of my favorite features on board Oasis class ships, as well as the Freedom class ships. And these are the cantilevered hot tubs. These are gonna be absolutely gigantic, huge hot tubs. Some of the biggest I've ever seen. They got great views out the side of the ship and you can even look down. The solarium is gonna be the adults only section on board the Symphony of the Seas. It's an absolute stunner, especially on the Symphony. There are many solariums across the fleet with Royal Caribbean. This is definitely the, my favorite of the ones that I have experienced. 
you got the Solarium Cafe, which is a free option for breakfast. Uh, it's a alternative complimentary option for guests. But look at this bar with this really cool like lenticular iridescent paint job. Just a really cool vibe over here in the front of the ship. Really great views. Not gonna get too sunburned because there's a lot of things blocking the sun rays for you and you're just gonna have really great views out the front. I really did like the Solarium Bistro's overall vibe. Just felt very upscale compared to maybe the Windjammer, a little less busy, not as many people knew about it. I talked to a lot of passengers actually on board that were like, this is the best secret on the ship. So keep that in mind. You heard it here. Go to the Solarium Bistro. Solarium actually has two different levels. So this is the top level. You're gonna fe feature a couple pools here and then there's a staircase in the middle. And then also entry from deck 14 that takes you up to a little secret section of the Solarium. And here's a look at the lower level of the Solarium as we enter from deck 14, just to give you an idea of what things look like. I really like the outdoor section here too that's above the bridge, so this is a great place for sail away. It gets really windy, of course, when the ship is underway, but just to give you a little look at what the lower level of the Solarium looks like, here it is. Now let's continue our tour of deck 15. See what else there is to find on board. Now, if this is your first ship tour of an Oasis class ship, how massive is this thing? We're not even halfway through the tour. Keep on watching, it gets better. Another cantilevered hot tub to the right here. To the left are those two racing slides for the perfect storm. And to the left there is what's called the main pool, which is really not much bigger or different than the other pools, but it's called the main pool. To the left there is the pool bar, it's called the pool bar, and that's gonna be next to the sports pool. So this is where you'll find activities like Volleyball, pool volleyball, the strongest man competition, the belly flop competition, that's all gonna happen there. Another look from the bottom of the piano staircase. Now we're gonna head down to deck 
14 and check out what else there is to do on that deck. I know we had a little preview of deck 14 with the Solarium, and now we'll see what other wonders there might be, including Adventure Ocean, which is a place just for kids. It's gonna be a really cool spot though. You actually have the Puzzle Break Center, which is a place for an escape room type experience. That's available to adults as well, but it is an extra charge. It's about $35 on my cruise, which is a little rich for my blood. So let's take a look at the Adventure Ocean sections. There's different areas for different ages, all the way down to six months old. You have to be six months old to sail on a cruise. And there's a nursery that is an extra charge for young parents, but if you did want to maybe have one dinner to yourselves, I hear ya, I have a young kid as well. It is absolutely worth the money. Now I've been on old ships with Royal Caribbean. I've been on some of the newer ones. The Oasis class ships definitely have the best, most like varied activity kids clubs. I feel like they have a lot of sections that are kind of multi-purpose, like, like science experiments and a whole, their own theater. Really, really cool stuff throughout the cruise. I've never cruised uh, Royal Caribbean with someone who would be actually accessing the kids clubs, but I gotta imagine that the kids absolutely love everything that's going on in these rooms. Have you sailed with children on Royal Caribbean? Let me know. Now, midship on deck 14 is actually Seven Hearts Card Room. So this is a place with a lot of games. Cards actually doubles as a little computer area as well. In case you forgot your laptop, you can access the internet here for an extra charge, of course. But a nice little card room here on board the Symphony of the Seas. Like many ships built for the American audience, there's no deck 13. So down on deck 12 is Wonderland. Wonderland is a fantastic specialty restaurant. It's kind of your gastronomic experience. It's going to have your molecular gastronomy. It's going to have a really cool theme, some characters walking around that's lightly themed to Wonderland. Very special experience and only available on some of the newer ships of the Royal Caribbean, so I do recommend trying out at least once here. It's two levels. Top level is going to be the entrance as well as the bar, and then the lower level is going to be the main dining room. Stay tuned for my Symphony of the Seas review videos. I'm just going to feature a dinner here at Wonderland. And of course, you got a great view out the boardwalk there, as well as the ultimate abyss. Going down to deck nine, it's going to be the top level of Dazzles, which is a nightclub, multi-purpose venue. It's going to have a lot of games in the evening for adults. It's going to be really loud in here. It's a really great venue with a good view. It's going to be a similar view from Wonderland, uh, but just a little bit lower, of course, to the top level of Dazzles. And you can see how beautiful the view is out there. A lot of live bands dancing going on in Dazzles each evening. And here's a look at the lower level of Dazzles. Deck 8 is going to feature Central Park, one of the most unique offerings that the Oasis class ships all have. This is going to be a real park, so these are all real plants on board this cruise ship. There's going to be a number of different specialty restaurants as well as one included restaurant, the Park Cafe. A few shops, a few bars, the Rising Tide Bar, which goes in between decks. Yes, it is an elevator that is also a bar. And you're going to have a few balconies as well. Uh, so these are going to be some of the cheaper balconies on board because they don't have ocean view. Chops Grill, a classic on board any Royal Caribbean ship, is the ship's premier steakhouse. Ate there many times on my voyage. To the right there is the opening for the Rising Tide Bar, so currently it's down on the Royal Promenade. 
See the left, there is some outdoor seating for chops. On the right, on the other side, is going to be 150 Central Park, which is another specialty restaurant. It's going to be sort of your new American fare. I actually think this is my favorite restaurant on board any Oasis class ship so far that I've tried. So definitely check that out if you are looking to be on board. Trellis Bar is going to be a nice ambiance. It's going to be located here in the park. Good people watching as people pass through. As you take a look up, you can actually see the Perfect Storm water slides up on the pool deck. And here's the Park Cafe. This is a complimentary option, another great breakfast spot that is not gonna be as crowded as up on the Windjammer. Gonna be open for lunch and dinner as well. Rounding out the specialty options here in Central Park is Jamie's Italian. Their menu is gonna feature charcuterie boards, some really fresh pastas each day, really great spot to try if you're into Italian food. Next door to that is Vintage's, the ship's wine bar. And then across the way, you have some high-end jewelry and watch stores. So a very upscale feel here inside Central Park. Moving on to the forward part of deck six is the Vitality at Sea. So that is the spa on board as well as the fitness center. You're gonna have a nice little Vitality Cafe as well. It's gonna be a good place to get coffee in the morning. Or if you're into like fresh squeezed juices, smoothies, that sort of thing, there are a few complimentary food items as well. Good place to check out. To the left is the ship's salon. And they're gonna be able to do every treatment that they can do on land. I always do these tours of the spa on embarkation day because it just gives me the best chance to see all the facilities without doing a treatment myself. I'm not a big spa goer. I do love a good steam room, especially if it's included in my cruise fare, which some Royal Caribbean ships do have. Fortunately, that's not the case here on board Oasis class ships. Overall, I feel like the spa facilities on pretty much every Oasis class ship that I've been on, I wish that there were more ocean views. I wish that there was a more relaxing atmosphere. It just seems like it's really all about the treatments and the sort of rooms that you can pay to access to use the steam room, etc. Not a lot of space really to lounge about.
One unique feature I did see inside the spa is this radiant heat dry sauna. So no steam or you know any water that you pour on some hot rocks needed. You actually have these lamps doing it. First time I've seen that. Then they do have a couple suite so you can actually have your own hot tub. They serve you champagne as well. It's a nice look. And then of course there is the fitness center. That is free to use, no need to pay for a treatment or anything like that to use it. Really spacious here, lots and lots of equipment. It's a very big ship, over 6,000 passengers, almost 7,000. So you're gonna need a lot of space for people that are working out, a lot of new machines. I used this a couple of times and I was, I was pretty excited by just how big this place actually is. It does have access down to the running track, one deck below, which is really cool. So you can actually get your jog on here in the Fitness Center. One more part of deck six, a little bit further away from the spa. It's gonna feature a few public facilities, including one of my favorite bars on board any Royal Caribbean ship. It is the Schooner Bar. The schooner Bar is gonna feature a lot of trivia throughout the day. I do wish it was bigger on the Oasis class ships. It does get pretty busy. You have the short excursions desk as well as the photo center focus over here on the right. And then you actually have the loyalty desk over there to the left. And then here is a good look at the rising tide bar. Doing an about face, we're gonna head out to the boardwalk, which is a very popular area on board any Oasis class ship, especially the Symphony of the Seas. This is gonna be a really cool spot. It's just absolutely magical what they do out here. You're gonna have a carousel on board a cruise ship. It's completely free. You can ride as many times as you'd like with your little one. It's gonna have a nice carnival feel. We're gonna check out all there is to do out here. To the left is going to be a complimentary hot dog stand on board the Symphony of the Seas. And then to the right is an outdoor arcade. So you're going to have the Papa Shot there. There's an indoor arcade section right next door. Here's the aforementioned carousel. Free to use. Free to ride as many times as you'd like. Inside the arcade, these are not free games. I do want to mention that to all the parents. Do not let your kids run free with your CPAS card in here. It might be more expensive than the casino. Few more options here on the boardwalk. We're gonna have a few shops including Sugar Beach, that's gonna be the high-end candy shop, as well as the high-end ice cream stand. So you actually have to pay for the ice cream here, whereas on the pool deck, the soft serve is gonna be free. Just keep that in mind. Kids could go wild in there too. And I always forget the names of the various shops here. Surf Shack's gonna have some swimwear, various beach style things to buy. And then right next door to that is Johnny Rockets. Johnny Rockets, of course, a non-complimentary restaurant, except for in the morning. There is free breakfast in Johnny Rockets, but if you want a milkshake on board, that's where you go. Playmakers to the right, they're gonna have a bar, they're gonna have every sport imaginable on there. If there's a live sport going on, they're gonna have it. They do have a per piece paid menu, so you gotta pay per item in there. 
if you do have the unlimited dining package though, you do get a $20 credit per day in there. So that's kind of helpful. Try some of the items. A little kid area over here to climb around in the nets. And then the end of the ultimate abyss lands right here. And of course, the aqua theater is one of the coolest features on board any Oasis class ship. You're gonna have tons of high diving acrobatics in the evenings here. That's gonna be located right next to the ship's twin rock climbing walls. Heading down to deck five right beneath this is gonna be the top floor of the main dining room. There's three levels of the main dining room on board the Symphony of the Seas. Dining in the main dining room is completely complimentary. You can either do my time dining where you get to choose when you dine or you have set seating. Encircling deck five is the jogging track. Only a few laps around will get you a mile. It's gonna be a lot larger than your typical track at a high school facility, for instance. It's really cool to have that but also on this deck is the Royal Promenade, which is absolutely a stunner and a highlight of any time on board the Symphony of the Seas. It'd be a hubbub of activity throughout the day and night. You're gonna have your internet desk and your port and shopping desk here. You're gonna have your guest services, but then you're gonna have a few bars and restaurants as well. And of course, shopping. Regalia is gonna be your ship's watch shop. Have some gently used Rolexes in there for a pretty penny. Guest services right next door to that. The bottom level of the rising tide bar so you can grab it from either the central park or down here in the royal promenade and then the bionic bar which is really heavily advertised it's robotic bartenders which is pretty cool to do at least once i will say they do charge a gratuity on the bionic bar which i find pretty funny the royal promenade is going to have parades throughout the cruise as well so definitely check out the ship schedule just make sure you don't miss that it's pretty cool to see at least once Cafe Promenade over there to the left, that's gonna have free food items as well as specialty coffees and free coffees. It's gonna have a lot of items that are complimentary for you during your cruise. Really cool little piece of art here, a crushed VW Bug. Next cruise, and if you wanna book a, your next cruise on board, you're gonna get some promos typically for doing so. The shop's gonna be the Royal Caribbean logo shop, so a lot of items specific to the ship in there. The Copper and Kettle is gonna be the ship's very, very delicious pub. They have a lot of good beers in here. They're gonna have live music, sometimes trivia in here in the evenings. Right across the way is gonna be Sorrento's, which is the ship's not quite 24 hours, but pretty late night food option. And it's gonna have, of course, cheese, pepperoni, some vegetable pizzas, some specialty pizzas. This place is always popular. And you have those freestyle Coca-Cola machines as well. If you get the drink package, you do get a free mug to use at those. Uh, so you can come and go and get soda to your heart's content. Port Merchants is gonna have your duty-free liquors, cigars, that sort of thing. Regalia, another jewelry shop. Very cool sculpture here in the middle of the Royal Promenade, kind of continuing the theme from the Solarium. And then of course the ship's very own Starbucks that is not included in the drink package, by the way. To the right is Bolero's, which is gonna have Latin music and Latin dancing in the evening, sometimes some events in there as well. On Air is going to have a lot of karaoke throughout the cruise as well as evening entertainment like game shows. I wish that this venue was a little bit bigger because it gets pretty packed. They do a lot of popular stuff in here. Downstairs from the Royal Promenade, it's gonna be the entertainment place. So there's a number of different entertainment options. This is an entertainment neighborhood. Now you're gonna have your casino, your Studio B ice skating rink. We're gonna check that out in just a sec. Also the lower level here of the Royal Theater, which we'll show you from up top. 
I did laser tag on my last one, and it was a blast. Moving down to deck four, the Casino Royale, split into two sections actually here. You have the non-smoking section over there with table games, some slot machines, obviously not as big as the main casino, but it's great to have that option now on board. To the right here is the attic. That is going to be the ship's comedy club. You're going to have art from Park West spread out. The Crown Lounge, I have to correct myself now because it used to be called the Diamond Lounge. It's now the Crown Lounge. So that's going to be your top tier members on board. They have access to that. Some special options for food, a nice coffee machine in there for people that have sailed Royal Caribbean a whole bunch. Casino Royale is going to come up ahead and inside what we're walking around is actually called Studio B. That's where your amazing ice skating shows. <laughs> This is also where Park West decides to hang out. So if you want to buy some high-end art, you can do so on board. And that will lead into the casino. And on the other end of the casino is one more level of the main dining room, which is going to be located right next to Izumi. And Izumi is going to be the ship's Asian restaurant. It's going to have a hibachi concept as well as a sushi bar. Really, really good stuff in here. And then down one level on deck three is the conference center. And that is our tour of Symphony of the Seas.